I'm Ronnie and I have a blog called multiculturalmotherhood.com and I blog about my multicultural motherhood journey. I blog about um, how to raise multicultural and multilingual children. Um, I'm a homeschooling mum of four. I've just given birth to baby number four, Alhamdulillah. And um, I just wanted to share my birth story with you. First of all, um, all of my babies have been very overdue. Um, all of them between 7 and 12 days overdue. So once I got to my due date, I did not expect it to happen this time. And I was right. I had to wait another 7 days. Um, so baby number 4 was 7 days late. Yes. Um, so I wasn't really expecting anything to happen until at least day seven anyway because that's the earliest any of my babies have ever been born, seven days late. Um, so I had a midwife appointment uh, booked for that day and I went to it and um, they asked me if I would like a membrane sweep um, and I agreed to that um, because I'd rather have a membrane sweep than go really overdue and have to be induced via drugs. So I had the membrane sweep and for me membrane sweeps have never been uncomfortable. I know for a lot of women they do find them quite painful but for me I've never had any um, problems with the membrane sweep um, so it wasn't painful for me at all. I'm not sure whether it's more painful if um, your your cervix is not ready for that um, that might be the case but for me um, at seven days overdue it was not painful at all um, so the midwife did that and she said I was um, about two centimeters dilated at that point um, and it's quite normal to be slightly dilated um, before your contractions start anyway I believe so um, after that I went home and I thought I'd better keep moving um, because I really wanted that membrane sweep to work. I wanted that baby out. I was already seven days overdue and I thought this baby, I'm just ready for this baby to come out now, basically. <laughs> so um, I was walking around the kitchen and around the living room and then I thought, I didn't really want to keep walking around so I just thought I'll have a bounce on the birthing ball. So I've got this big ball that I had in the living room and I just sat on that for ages, bouncing, moving around, moving, you know, wiggling around on the birthing ball. And um, I did that for quite a while that afternoon. And then um, it, was, it was evening time, we put the other three children to bed and... Um, my husband went out to get some milk and I just sat on the sofa and um, my husband rang and he said he was asking me what I wanted from the shop and um, as I was speaking to him on the phone my waters broke um, so I said oh my gosh my waters have broke you better come home now um, he of course was quite surprised that he rushed home um, we were both surprised really that my waters went um, first this time because with the other three they have gone right at the end when I've been fully dilated. So I really wasn't expecting them to go at all. Uh, and it just proves that each birth can be completely different. So after three births where my waters went right at the end, I then had my fourth, with my fourth baby, my waters went at the beginning. So that was really something that neither of us were expecting. And I kind of started to panic a bit after that because I thought, oh my gosh, with my other births, as soon as my waters went, the baby was born because obviously I'd already been fully dilated. So I was kind of worried, is this birth going to be really, really quick? Um, what's going to happen now? I went upstairs, um, I sat on the toilet and the waters were just kind of trickling out. And um, I thought, oh, I'd better ring the hospital. I hadn't had any contractions yet at this point. So... I went back downstairs and I rang the hospital and they said come in and we because we need to check your baby check everything's okay um, and if contractions haven't started then we'll send you back home until they start um, so 
I rang my parents and my dad came over to look after the children at my house and then my husband drove me to the hospital and on our way to the hospital um, I did start to get contractions in the car so these were really not too bad contractions you know at the start the contractions are not really that painful um, so yeah it was fine we got to the hospital um, we um, took a seat on one of the beds in the wards and um, the midwife came over and I think um, just asked for my details and things and then I didn't get examined probably for another half an hour after that. I was kind of walking around by the bed because you know I wanted things to get moving and if you're upright and active then things can move a lot more quickly. So I was walking around and um, then the midwife came over to examine me. So I lay on the bed and um, she examined me to check that the waters had gone and what colour the waters were and she said they were clear so that was fine. Um, and then she said I was three centimetres dilated. So I thought, oh my gosh, I've got ages to go. Um, but she said, because your waters have gone, um, we're not going to send you home now. We'll check you again in two hours and if things have not progressed then you can just go home until the contractions get worse. So. We ended up going to um, the early labour room, just a room with um, a kitchen area where you can make yourself cups of tea and coffee and there were birthing balls there, bean bags and there were some fairy lights, dim lighting. It was really, really nice. So we just sat in there for a while. My contractions started to get quite a lot worse quite quickly. So um, I said to my husband, you know, I think we better go back. Um, to the room and tell them it's just getting worse. I think they need to check me again and see how far along I am now. So we went back and my husband got the midwife and then she said that I was four centimetres dilated. Um, so I got to go to the um, delivery room. The contractions, they were getting quite bad quite quickly now. And I got to the delivery room at um, just before 11 o'clock. Um, so I think 10.45 I was 4 centimetres dilated um, so then they got the room ready for me we got there just before 11 o'clock and um, the midwife um, gave me some gas and air to use I've only ever used gas and air with all four of my deliveries um, I've never really wanted that much um, medical intervention or anything I just um, I really wanted natural births so I've and I've never wanted an epidural or anything so um, I just opted for the gas and air, like I did previously. So I started using gas and air about 11 o'clock and um, the midwife went away and she said she'd come back later. Um, after about 10 minutes, I thought I needed the toilet. So I went to the toilet and when I sat down on the toilet, I could feel that the baby's head was um, just there and I just felt like pushing. Um, so I went back to um, the room, to the bed, and I couldn't, I was trying to get up on the bed, but I couldn't. With my next contraction, I just started to push, and I said to my husband, you know, you better press the bell now, the baby's coming. Um, so my husband pressed the bell, and the midwife came when the baby's head was half out. And I think we were all a bit shocked at this point, because, you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes ago I'd been four centimetres dilated and you know within such a short space of time um, the baby was being born and we were all just really really shocked I could not believe it myself I was I was worried to even push because I thought how can I be fully dilated already how can it be time already I'm only four centimetres um, but you know if you've had a baby before you know when it's time to push there's nothing really you can do to stop it so I started to push and I was just standing by the bed. I mean, I didn't even have a chance to get on the bed. So the midwife came and um, just before the baby's head was fully out um, and apparently she put her hand under the baby's head just in case the baby shot out. Um, so yeah, the baby's head was out and then with the next um, two contractions I pushed out the body, baby's body 
and then she was born and I was just in such a state of shock afterwards because it had been my quickest labour, my quickest birth and I was just not expecting it to go that way at all. I mean, my other three labours, they took a lot, lot longer. Um, you know, pretty much half a day or all day in labour until the birth, until the baby was born. Um, so this one was really different and it just goes to show, you know, after three babies that have been born quite in quite a similar way, quite similar labours and everything, the fourth one was just completely different and something I was not expecting at all. But thank goodness, I mean, it was the most easy, straightforward birth that I've had and, you know, I was just so thankful after that it was such an easy labour and birth, alhamdulillah. It was just amazing and I couldn't have asked for a better labour and birth really. So after the baby was born, the midwife um, passed the baby up through my legs and I held her and then they helped me get onto the bed and uh, we immediately, I immediately put the baby on my chest um, so we could do skin to skin and um, after that um, I opted for delayed cord clamping which is where the um, you let the blood drain from the umbilical cord before um, before you clamp it and that's supposed to allowing that blood to flow back back into the baby it's supposed to be really good for the baby's um iron levels and things like that so um but even that happened really really quickly as well i mean the midwife said to me okay it's time to clamp the cord and i was like are you gonna let it um do delay cord clamping let the you know let all the blood run out first and she was like it's already gone look it's empty and I could see that there was no blood left in the umbilical cord at all. And it must have been within a matter of minutes. It Honestly, it was so quick. Um, so the midwife clamped it and then she gave the scissors to my husband and my husband cut the cord. Um, and then she asked me if I wanted the injection for the placenta. And I agreed to this. Um, I did try with my second birth to have... Um, a completely natural third stage where you just let the placenta come out whenever it's ready without the injection um, and it was okay but I did bleed quite heavily afterwards and um, looking back on that and talking to midwives about it we all thought that it was best if I had um, the injection um, to help with the placenta to stop me bleeding too much again so with my third birth I had the injection and I did not bleed nearly so much and also with this um, last birth I had the injection as well and that was absolutely fine um, the placenta came out really quickly I didn't have very much blood loss and it was all really good um, so yeah that's um, what happened and then I was just sat on the bed for a while my mum and my sister arrived my sister had driven all the way down to Bristol from London as soon as she heard that I was going into hospital but she missed it again. <laughs> Each time I go into labour, my, both my sisters drive down from London and they always miss it, <laughs> unfortunately for them. Um, and even my mum missed it this time. My mum has been with me for my previous three labours and births, but this time even she didn't get there in time. It was so quick. Um, so afterwards, when I was just um, holding the baby, my mum and my sister were allowed in and yeah they just had a little cuddle with the baby as well and and then afterwards um i breastfed because i have opted to breastfeed all of my babies i just think it's the best thing in the world it's great for bonding and you know it's so easy really i don't know why anyone would want to bottle feed it just seems way too much effort for me <laughs> i mean sterilizing bottles making sure they're at the right temperature and everything i can't be bothered with that I mean breastfeeding is just so convenient, so easy and obviously it's just what I think is best for baby so yeah I love breastfeeding, I think it's amazing and yes yeah, since um, we've been home we got home um, later that night so she was born at about yeah 17 minutes past 11 at night and we left the hospital about 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, 
this was the first time I actually hadn't stayed in hospital overnight. Um, but I think because it was such a straightforward birth and delivery, um, I just felt fine to go home afterwards. Um, so I got home like about half three in the morning and then we just went straight to bed and yeah, just had a nice relax. And um, we are co-sleeping, so I think that makes life a lot, lot easier. Co-sleeping is amazing. Like I didn't do it with my first because everyone told me you know, all the health visitors and midwives and everything, they say do not co-sleep, it's, they all say don't co-sleep, um, it's, you know, you could roll onto the baby or whatever, so I didn't do it with my first at all, and then when I had my second, um, I read the book Three in a Bed by Deborah Jackson, I think it is, and oh my god, that just completely changed my opinion and now, I would never not co-sleep, to be honest. I just think it's amazing for you, it's amazing for baby. You know, when you have a newborn baby, they just want to be next to you, they want to be close to you, they don't want to be put in a, a cot all on their own. You know, it makes breastfeeding so easy. It gives you so much more sleep at night because you don't have to get out of bed. You can just lie there and breastfeed and yeah, it is amazing. I would recommend it definitely. But if you want to do some research on it, I would recommend that book. It is absolutely amazing. And I wish I had read it with my first and I knew about it then, but you know, you live and learn. There's a lot of things I probably did differently with my second than that I didn't do with my first. We're all on a journey in motherhood and we change as we learn new things. So I hope you enjoyed listening to my um, labour and birth story and um, until next time, bye!